I'm sure you know how to draw the chloroplast, but uh, let me help you to draw and label a diagram. This will be chloroplast. Uh -huh. And uh, you know that chloroplast consists of outer membrane and inner membrane. So this will be grass. So I want to show you with thylakoid membrane. And you know that uh, between thylakoid membrane, they, there is a space uh, which is called stroma. This space is filled with a fluid. So here will be the gram. So this will be thylakoid membrane. Thylakoid membrane. This will be stroma. This will be the outer membrane. And um, this will be the DNA molecule. And also ribosomes. Let's mention ribosomes also. Mm -hmm. So this will be ribosomes. So now I'm going uh, to clean the drawing because I want to show you another picture. Uh, in plants, photosynthesis takes place inside chloroplasts. And uh, chloroplasts are located both in spongy mesophyll and pellicide mesophyll layer of the leaf. So chloroplasts contain sac like structures uh, and these structures are called grants and they are composed of thylakoid membrane and the space between the thylakoid membrane is called stroma and this is the outer membrane of chloroplasts inside the chloroplasts uh, so uh, there are a lot of enzymes and these enzymes uh, have a major role in Kelvin cycle. About the Kelvin cycle, we shall talk later. Uh, thylakoids are sac like photosynthetic membranes. They are arranged, arranged in stacks known as grana. A singular stack is called a granum. So this will be a granum. And this will be grana. Proteins in thylakoid membrane organize chlorophyll and other pigments into clusters called photosystems, which are the light collecting units of the chloroplasts. So, the light uh, is a source of energy and the unit is photon. The photon is absorbed by thylakoid membrane where the light dependent reaction takes place of photosynthesis. You know that red and blue colors are absorbed by chlorophyll molecule and green and yellow colors are reflected from the surface. Uh, another picture showing uh, the structure of chloroplast and uh, as it mentions here, seven Hpberg ribosomes and naked DNA are inside the stroma. Thylakoid membrane is the place where light dependent reaction takes place. So now you know how does the structure of chloroplast and mitochondria assist to their function. This is the micrograph of the chloroplast. And we can easily label such a micrographs because we can see the granum, outer membrane, the stroma, and thylakoid membrane of chloroplast. The next assessment statement state that photosynthesis consists of light dependent and light independent reactions. 
this should not be called like light and dark reactions. The reactions of the photosystems include two reactions, the light dependent reactions and the light independent reactions or Kelvin cycle. Light dependent reactions takes place within the thylakoid membranes and Kelvin uh, cycle takes place inside the stroma with the region outside the thylakoid membrane. So during light dependent reactions that takes place in thylakoid membrane, the photolysis is very important because photolysis of the water uh, gives some hydrogen ions to uh, hydrogen ions that accumulate uh, uh, between outer and inner membrane of chloroplast and also the oxygen is produced as a byproduct. Light dependent reaction occur in the stroma of chloroplasts and uh, the carbon fixation, Calvin cycle and synthesis of carbohydrate are stages of light independent reaction. So uh, water is uh, inside the chloroplasts and when the light reaches to thylakoid membrane, a photolysis takes place and water splits into hydrogen and ox hydrogen ions and oxygen molecule. Oxygen as a byproduct uh, escape from the chloroplast uh, and ATP, NADPH are made during light dependent reaction. So why ATP and NADPH are important for Kelvin cycle? We are, we are going to talk a little bit later, but you should know that uh, after carbon fixation and uh, during the Kelvin cycle, a sugar is formed. For light dependent reaction, ADP and NADP plus are important because ADP is phosphorylated to form ATP and NADP plus uh, takes hydrogen electron. It means uh, uh, NADP plus reduced into NADPH and ADP is phosphorylated into ATP. Oxygen is produced as a byproduct. Then the Kelvin cycle occurs inside the stroma. The sugars are made during the Kelvin cycle. The next assessment statement explain the light dependent reactions. And we should include the photoactivation of photosystem two, photolysis of water, electron transfer chain, cyclic and non-cyclic photophosphorylation, photoactivation of photosystem one, and reduction of NADP plus. The light dependent reaction require light. Uh, during the light dependent reaction, oxygen uh, gas is produced as a byproduct. ADP is uh, converted into ATP. NADP plus is converted into NADPH. So this is thylakoid membrane. And uh, as you can guess from the picture, this is ATP synthase and this green uh, circles are photosystems and there are two different photosystems embedded inside thylakoid membrane. Photosynthesis begins when pigments in photosystem 2 absorb light and increase energy level. After that, electrons, high energy electrons pass from one electron carrier protein to another carrier protein. Electron acceptor in this case are NADP plus and FADP plus. Water undergoes photolysis and high energy electrons that uh, uh, go from one uh, or move from one electron carrier to another electron carrier are replaced by the electrons of water molecule. 
The energized electrons from water replace the high energy electrons that chlorophyll lost to the electron transport chain. As plants remove electrons from water, oxygen is left behind and is released into the air. The hydrogen ions left behind when water is broken apart and are released inside the silicoid membrane. Hydrogen ions pass from the stroma into the inner silicoid space. Hydrogen ions accumulate inside inner silicoid space. High energy electrons move from uh, uh, photosystem two to photosystem one. So you can guess that this is photosystem two and this is photosystem one. Pigments in photosystem one use energy from light to re-energize the electrons. And when the electrons are re-energized, they pass to NADP+. So NADP+, picks up these high-energy electrons along with hydrogen ions and becomes NADPH. As electrons are passed from chlorophyll to NADP+, more hydrogen ions are pumped across the membrane. Soon, the inside of the membrane fills up with positively charged hydrogen ions, which makes the outside of the membrane negatively charged. The difference in charges across the membrane provides the energy to make ATP, and hydrogen ions cannot cross the membrane directly. So they can cross the membrane only by the channel of ATP synthase. So when hydrogen ions pass through ATP synthase, the protein rotates. As it rotates, ATP synthase binds ADP and the phosphate group together to produce ATP. So we can say that ADP phosphorylates into ATP. Because of this system, light-dependent electron transport produces not only high energy electrons, but also ATP as well. So we can say finally that light-dependent reaction use water, ADP, and NADP plus to produce oxygen, ATP, and NADPH. These compounds provide the energy to build energy containing sugars from low energy compounds. Light energy is used to split water, releasing hydrogen, which can be used by ATP synthetase to produce ATP. NADP plus is reduced to NADPH and hydrogen ions. And ATP and NADPH are used in the light independent reaction, but oxygen is a waste product. So explain photophosphorylation in terms of chemiosmosis. Chemiosmosis theory is based on accumulation of a high concentration of hydrogen, which is due to proton pumping, there being a concentration difference between two places, which is the high concentration of hydrogen in the silicoid space and a lower concentration in the stroma. Protons diffuse through the core of the ATP synthase. This drives the motor mechanism of the structure resulting in the reduction of ADP to ATP. So light dependent reaction illustration. Please look one more time.
The next assessment statement explain the light independent reactions. Include the roles of ribulose bisphosphate, carboxylase, reduction of glycerate free phosphate, to triose phosphate, NADPH and hydrogen ions, ATP, regeneration of ribulose bisphosphate, and subsequent synthesis of more complex carbohydrates. ATP and NADPH, which are formed by the light dependent reaction, contain an abundance of chemical energy. But they are not stable enough to store that energy for more than a few minutes. During the Kelvin cycle, plants use the energy that ATP and NADPH contain to build high energy compounds in the form of the sugars that can be stored for a long time. So the Kelvin cycle is light independent reaction. It uses ATP and NADPH from the light-dependent reactions to produce high-energy sugars. So, six carbon dioxide molecules enter the cycle from the atmosphere and combine with six five-carbon molecules, ribulose bisphosphate. This re reaction is catalyzed by the enzyme Rubisco. Please remember the name of enzyme Rubisco because it is very important during independent reaction. So one more time, six carbon dioxide molecule enters the cycle from the atmosphere and joins or links with uh, five carbon molecule ribulose bisphosphate. The six carbon molecule is split in half. The result is 12 free carbon molecules, glycerate free phosphate, which are then converted into higher energy forms. This is the first product of carbon fixation. One more time. The six carbon molecules, you see it in your screen, splits in half, then the result is 12 free carbon molecule glycerate free phosphate. The energy for this conversion comes from ATP and high energy electrons from NADPH. So it means there is energy input in this reaction. ATP is used and converted into ADP. NADPH is used and reduced into NADP and uh, oxidized into NADP plus. Triose phosphate, 12 triose phosphate, are converted into another molecule. So this molecule contains three uh, carbon atoms, and this molecule can easily make sugar. So, as you can see, there are 12 free carbon compounds and only two of these 12 are used to produce sugars. The 10 remaining free carbon molecules triose phosphate are converted back into six five carbon molecules ribulose bisphosphate which are used to begin the next cycle as you can see atp is used for this reaction six molecules of atp 
five carbon molecules are regenerated from triphosphate. This is triosphosphate, ribulose bisphosphate, and uh, let's summarize the information related to light independent reaction. So, ribulose bisphosphate is carboxylated with carbon dioxide, and uh, six carbon compound it, uh, is splitted into two glycerate free phosphate and the enzyme for uh, this reaction is rubisco then the reduction of glycerate free phosphate takes place and glycerate free phosphate converts into triose phosphate atp and nadph are used for this reaction most of the triose phosphate produces, which are produced is used to regenerate ribulose bisphosphate, but some of the triose phosphate molecules are linked to form glucose phosphate. First of all, light independent reaction takes place in stroma. Light independent reactions are also called Kelvin cycle. That ribulose bisphosphate is a five carbon compound. Then the fixation of carbon from carbon dioxide adds one carbon to the uh, ribulose bisphosphate. So this is called carboxylation. Uh, this uh, reaction is catalyzed by Rubisco enzyme. Then six carbon compounds split into two glycerate free phosphate molecules. Glycerate free phosphate is reduced to triose phosphate and this uses ATP and NADPH and only one of six triose phosphates is converted to glucose phosphate and glucose phosphate is converted to starch or cellulose. Five triose phosphates from six are used to reform ribulose bisphosphate and this also uses ATP. So you should include this information to gain the highest mark for this question. The next uh, question is explain how the light independent reaction, reactions of photosynthesis rely on the light dependent reactions. So what is important to include in your answer? Light independent reactions fixes carbon dioxide to make glycerate free phosphate, glycerate free phosphate GP, uh, uh, phosphoglyceric acid become reduced to triose phosphate, phosphoglyceraldehyde glyceraldehyde free phosphate using NADPH, using ATP. ATP needed to regenerate ribulose bisphosphate. ATP is made in the light dependent reaction. Light causes photoactivation or excit um, excitation of electrons. Flow of electrons causes pumping of protons into xylocoid membrane. ATP is formed when protons pass back across the xylocoid membrane. Electrons are passed to electron acceptors, that's NADP and uh, NADP+. NADPH produced in the light dependent reaction go to the Kelvin cycle. So next assessment statement. Explain the relationship between the structure of the chloroplast and its function. Limit this to the large surface area of xylocoids for light absorption, the small space inside the xylocoids for accumulation of protons, and the fluid stroma for enzymes of Kelvin cycle. So, structure, large xylocoid surface area small space inside the thylakoids, fluid field stroma. So large thylakoid surface area increases the absorption surface. Small space inside the thylakoids are for accumulation of hydrogen ions. The fluid field stroma contains enzymes for Kelvin cycle. One more time, you can uh, read the information on your screen. And now, comparison between chloroplast and mitochondria. Both 
have membranes. Membranes which uh, compartmentalize the organelles in the cell's cytoplasm. Thylakoid membrane and inner mitochondrial membrane carry out electron transport chain, have ATP synthase enzyme embedded in the membrane. They both generate ATP and make use of chemiosmosis of hydrogen ions. Stacked membranes are called granum. Invaginated membranes of mitochondria are called crista. Both maximize surface area for reactions. Low volume intermembrane space, both in chloroplast and mitochondria, regenerate hydrogen ion concentration gradient. Stroma of Kelvin, a stroma of chloroplast, and matrix of mitochondria. Uh, contain enzymes for cyclic reactions. White light from the sun is a short section of the much larger electromagnetic spectrum. White light is made up of a range of wavelengths that correspond to the color we can see. Longer wavelengths have less energy, for example, red light. Shorter wavelengths have more energy, for example, blue light. Absorption spectra are obtained from samples of pigment. Using a colorimeter, different wavelengths of light are passed through and absorption is measured. This absorption spectra for chlorophyll shows absorption of blue light, absorption of red light, and how green light is reflected. Please look carefully into your screen, screen and you can see different pigments and different wavelengths they absorb. Notice that y-axis is a rate of photosynthesis and uh, the rate of photosynthesis is measured at different wavelengths. So this is the y-axis and this is uh, x-axis. The y-axis is rate of photosynthesis and x-axis is for wavelengths. The maximum rate are at blue and red end of the visible spectrum. So this will be the blue and this will be the red. The lowest rates are in the yellow. Look here. So yellow, greens. Chlorophylls are absorbing blue and red light well, but not yellow and green. Through uh, comparison of action spectra and absorption spectrum, the following uh, correlations are seen. Blue light and red light are the main peaks of light absorption and responsible for the peaks in the rate of photosynthesis. The low absorption of green light corresponds to its reflection from, from the chlorophyll and apparent green color of chlorophyll and plants. The next uh, assessment statement is explain the concept of limiting factors in photosynthesis with reference to light intensity, temperature and concentration of carbon dioxide. First of all, let's talk about light intensity. So rate of photosynthesis increases as light intensity increases, photosynthetic rate reaches plateau at high light levels. Temperature. Rate of photosynthesis increases with increase in temperature up to optimal level to maximum. High temperature reduces the rate of photosynthesis. Why? Try to answer. Carbon dioxide concentration. So photosynthet photosynthetic rate rises as carbon dioxide concentration also rises up to maximum where a plateau is reached. So before uh, 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 ending this section, I want also to show the graphs. Let me show the graphs. So this will be for light intensity. This will be for uh, temperature and this one will be for carbon dioxide concentration. So 
when the uh, in a y axis is the rate of reaction and this is light intensity so for light intens intensity uh, let me take the red color when light intensity increases the rate of photosynthesis increases up to plateau phase mm -hmm. when Photosynthetic, reach, uh, photosynthetic rate reaches plateau at high levels of light intensity. Next, uh, I will draw for temperature when um, rate of photosynthesis uh, rate of photosynthesis increases when the temperature increases up to maximum point. Then the rate of photosynthesis decreases. Why it happens? You must answer by your own. I'm sure you know the answer. And carbon dioxide concentration, when carbon dioxide concentration increases or rises, uh, the rate of photosynthesis also increases to a maximum, to a plateau phase. So this will, will be for light intensity, temperature, and for carbon dioxide concentration. Thank you.